Movies recapped here, today I'm going to recap a horror and romance film called Spontaneous. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On a typical school day at Covington High, Mara Carlyle, who was a senior dropped her pencil. Suddenly, as she goes to pick it up something strangely explodes and blood is splattered all around the room. The class broke into panic. Turns out, one of their classmates named Caitlin had exploded without reason. The only thing left of her was her book bag and clothes. Mara stayed inside the classroom while her classmates rushed out of the room in utter shock. Caitlin was a sweet and kind girl although she was the Dalton twins' number one customer. The Dalton twins were a group of two young teens who were known for the drugs they sold around the school. As Mara makes her way outside of the school where everyone else was, she meets up with her best friend Tess McNulty. Tess is shocked at what happened and asks Mara what went down. Mara tells her that Caitlin exploded like a balloon. A few moments later investigators arrive at the scene and don't find any evidence of a bomb or a lethal weapon. They conclude that she was not a suicide bomber. Later, the whole class was taken to the police station to be interrogated. They were asked many important questions. Mara was marked as not helpful by the police officer. The class is later taken to another facility and they are given the opportunity to take a shower. Their clothes are taken away and they are changed into sweatpants. While the class is confined in one small room, multiple conspiracies emerge. Mara brings up the idea that more people can explode. The class goes into panic once they realize her statement is true. The students are later released from the facility and are reunited with their family. Mara meets up with her family and gives them a big hug. Once they get home her parents voice their concerns with what happened that day. Mara tells them not to worry and goes up to her room. While in her room she receives an anonymous text message that says hey just wanted to say I've had a crush on you for two years. Mara doesn't think too much of it and replies to the message. The next day a memorial is held at the school for Caitlin's passing. Afterwards, Mara and her best friend Tess attended Caitlin's funeral. This put Mara in a depressive state so she went to the Dalton twins for drugs in an attempt to run away from her depressive thoughts. Tess, as a good friend, tries to stop Mara from proceeding with this deal. Nonetheless Mara still ends up buying the drugs and they go to a local restaurant so she can do the drugs. They both get into a deep conversation about their youth and how far they've come since then. At this point, Mara is high off the substance she consumed. Suddenly, Dylan, who was the quiet and shy kid from their class came over to their table. Mara and Tess pondered for a bit before letting him take a seat. Before long, Mara realized that Dylan was the secret admirer who had messaged her a few days ago. He confesses that he had sent these messages and that he has a crush on Mara. She is surprised to hear this and they exchange a few laughs talking back about their messages. Mara asks him why he confessed all of a sudden. Dylan replied that the death of Caitlin made him realize he is prone to die at any second. He wants to live his life to the fullest before he dies. Mar feels sick from the drugs she originally consumed. She invites Dylan to accompany her in the bathroom. After getting the drugs out of her system she spends some time talking to Dylan. Her vision is blurred from the effects of the drugs. Later on in the night Dylan asks Mara out to homecoming. Mara is too high to think of a reason to say no. During Halloween, Mara and Dylan meet up and notice Caitlin's locker decorated in honor of her passing. She later asks him to explain the timeline of how he fell in love with her. He was in love with her for around two years, only once Caitlin passed is when he decided to talk to Mara. He said life is too short to not ask someone out. Later the two of them hang out at a football game. Mara confesses her love for him which surprises Dylan. A few moments later, one of the players on the field explodes, splattering blood everyone and onto multiple other players. Everyone in the stadium begins to rush out in panic. They later hug each other trying to comprehend what just happened. Harry Love was the player who exploded on the field. The news of the Covington curse had spread to news outlets and newspapers. His teammates made a memorial for him just like they did to Caitlin. At home during breakfast, Mara's parents inform her that school is cancelled due to the recent tragic events. Mara feels miserable as she hears the news. Later on in the night Mara waits outside of her house for Dylan to pick her up. He arrives in a dirty old ice cream truck that he bought with his college savings. He realized he could die at any second so instead of saving up for a better car he ended up going for the cheaper and funnier alternative. They both go to a party that was hosted by one of their classmates. After spending some time at the party they walk outside and talk a bit. Some sexual tension builds up and they end up sharing their first kiss together. Out of nowhere. People began running out of the house with lots of panic. They went inside the house to see what was going on and realized another student had exploded. There was blood all over the wall. The next day, in the morning Mara and her best friend Tess have a conversation with an agent named Carla. She asks them a few questions and lets them go on with their day. Mara then goes to the Dalton twins to inform them that the agent thinks illegal substances are behind the exploding. They all laugh it off and Mara buys up their whole stock of drugs to prove that illegal substances are not the reason for the exploding. The twins are excited and go to their stash house. While they were driving one of the Dalton twins named Joe suddenly explodes. Blood went all over the driver's seat making it slippery and hard for anyone to control the vehicle. Jenna tried to control the vehicle but she ended up exploding as well. The vehicle crashes on the side of the road. Dylan sees the car on the side of the road and decides to check it out. He notices a bloody handprint on a rock nearby the vehicle and decides to follow after it. He goes to the river and sees Mara washing herself off in the water. They share a big hug as they meet up once again. 
Dylan gives her some extra clothes to change in and a few moments later unknown men begin to walk towards them and take them away. They were transported to a medical facility and were being quarantined there until further notice. As Mara gains consciousness she notices herself in a bed and sees Dylan next to her. That night, Mara and Dylan move their beds closer to each other and begin talking. Dylan tells Mara that the whole class is in the same medical facility and that the doctors are doing tests on them. Dylan also asks Mara if she could be his girlfriend and Mara agreed. The next day, the students are asked questions regarding the situation. The students are given plenty of activities to do while they are being tested on. The classmates talk to each other and an idea pops up about breaking out of the facility. Another student says that Hess enjoying his time at the facility and doesn't mind staying for longer. Later the students are given a presentation about what the government is trying to do to keep them healthy. Mar asks the man that was giving them the presentation if they're really putting an effort to help out. This debate goes back and forth when, all of a sudden, one of the students randomly explodes. This explosion causes the students to stay at the facility for longer than intended. While everyone was asleep, another one of their classmates explodes in their sleep. The doctor told the parents of the child who exploded the bare news of what had happened. Testing is continued and the class is given lots of medication. As days go by the students keep exploding and it has become somewhat of a normal thing by now. It's no surprise for the students when someone explodes. One day, the students are finally released home when the right medication is created. Mara meets up with her parents once again and gives them a big hug. As they were on their way home, Mara notices that there are no Christmas decorations around the streets. She asks her parents why there are no decorations and they tell her that because of the human explosions, no one is in the mood to celebrate Christmas to the fullest. As they arrive at home, Mara is surprised with a Christmas tree by her parents. She is excited by this and helps finish decorating the tree. On Christmas Day Dylan comes over to Mara's house. They spend some time together. Later, Tess sees Mara and lets her know that school has resumed. Mara is not happy about this but Tess tries her best to motivate her to attend her classes. She ends up showing up to school the next day. The teacher talks about their safety and how the explosion won't happen again. An agent regularly checks up on the class to make sure they are healthy. Dylan's birthday rolls around and Mara surprises him with a barn that has colorful lights in it. She did this in hopes of bringing back childhood memories and to take their mind off the whole situation. The main doctor from the medical facility, comes to their classroom one day and explains that the medication they were given which is called the snooze button, will be available over the counter for everyone. She asks someone to volunteer as an example so she can explain to the class how the medication works. A brave student named Steve gets up and goes to the front of the class. The doctor instructs him to do a few movements and before you know it, Steve exploded in front of the whole class. Within a few moments, multiple other students around the room begin to explode as well. For a second the whole class sits in silence until someone started screaming. Everyone started running out of the classroom and into the halls. Blood was everyone and people kept exploding. It was a bloodbath and there was a stampede of people trying to run out of the school. Mar makes it out of the school and eventually finds Dylan outside of the school as well. They hug each other and laugh for a bit until Dylan suddenly explodes. Mara is heavily saddened by this. She walks home drenched in blood and can't even build the strength up to talk. A few days after Dylan's death, Mar has locked herself in her room and has not left since. She didn't even attend his funeral. She spends her days watching old videos of her and Dylan. To cope with her sadness, she becomes an alcoholic which concerns her parents. She goes over to Tess' house after a long night of drinking to invite her over to drink with her. Tess declines the offer because she wants to go to school. Mar meets with the agent at a liquor store and Mar accidentally throws a bottle at her car's window. She keeps spending her night at home surfing the web and getting more info about the Covington curse. It is now prom night and Tess sees Mara sitting alone on a swing set. They talk for a bit and start to reconnect again. Tess tells her that she does not want to live the life Mara is living and wants to continue on pursuing other things. Mara makes her way inside the prom building. The students are getting their diplomas for graduating. When Mara goes up on stage to accept her diploma, she says to the mic that she is the reason everyone is exploding. Multiple other students say the same thing about it being their fault. She walks home from prom and stops at the cemetery to visit Dylan. She mourns his death and lays down next to his grave. Within a few moments, Dylan's mom lays down next to Mara. They talk to each other about his loss and bring back old memories of them being together. Mara finally makes her way home and apologizes to her parents for what she's done. Mara had now graduated high school and is ready to pursue other ventures in her life. She says farewell to her parents and takes Dylan's ice cream truck. Out of the whole class, 31 students ended up dying in total. Mar visits the high school one last time and wonders why she wasn't one of the classmates that died. She breaks a smile as she is leaving town, happy to be out of there. That's the end of the video. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed. Turn on post notifications if you found this video entertaining and would like to watch more. Thank you for watching.